<clears throat> trigonometry, chapter one, trigonometric functions, section four, using definitions of trig functions, video nine, Pythagorean identities. The series is based on content from Pearson's Trigonometry 12th edition by Lyle, Hornsby, Schneider, and Daniels. In a previous video, we discussed the reciprocal identities. You see all three pairs here relating cosecant and sine, secant and cosine, cotangent and tangent. In this video, we derive three Pythagorean identities. And by the way, you need to have these memorized, your reciprocal identities. As its name implies, a Pythagorean identity is derived from the Pythagorean theorem. In the context of our trig functions, the version of the Pythagorean theorem we will use is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. But how can we take this equation and use it to derive trigonometric identities? The answer lies in connecting what we currently know about trig definitions to this equation, specifically these definitions, which have x's, y's, and r's. So let's think about it. How can we get some of these trig functions into this equation? In order to incorporate trig functions into this equation, we need some ratios. We accomplish this by dividing both sides of the equation by the square of any of the three variables. For example, consider both sine and cosine. Notice that their definitions both have a denominator of r. So we will divide both sides of this equation by r squared. That will set up some fractions whose denominator has an r. So let's divide both sides by r squared, and let's go through what would happen. On the left, we can split into two fractions. You can always split a, a fraction into two fractions uh, across a plus or minus in the numerator. So we get x squared over r squared plus y squared over r squared equals r squared over r squared. But notice that this first fraction, x squared over r squared, is just the square of cosine, and y squared over r squared is the square of sine. And of course, r squared over r squared is 1, giving us cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. And the theta was immaterial. So here is our first Pythagorean identity. You need to memorize it and never forget it. Cosine squared of theta plus sine squared theta equals 1, regardless of the value of theta. Now, to derive another Pythagorean identity, we create a different pair of ratios in our equation. This time, let's focus on ratios whose denominators are x. And which trig functions are those? That would be secant and tangent. Both have, both have denominators of x. We can, uh, we can uh, get the x squared, x in the denominator by dividing both sides of the equation by x squared. Now, let's just talk this one out. The first term, if we divide it by x squared, will become 1. The second term will become y squared over x squared, but y over x is the definition of tangent of theta. So the second term will become tangent squared. And the third uh, variable on the right side of the equation is r squared will become r squared over x squared. r over x is the definition of secant. So the right side will become secant squared. And it will look like this. 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared. And there's our second Pythagorean identity. You need to memorize this one too. To derive the final Pythagorean identity, we create ratios in our equation whose denominators are y. And which trig functions are those? You got it, cotangent and cosecant. If we divide both sides by y squared, think about what would happen. The y squared would become 1. The x squared over y squared would become cotangent squared. The r squared over y squared would become cosecant squared. And it would look like this. So here's our third and final Pythagorean identity, and you need to memorize it too. Cosine squared, excuse me, cotangent squared of theta plus one equals cosine squared of theta. Here are all three Pythagorean identities. I'm not kidding. You need to memorize them. And by the way, because each equation is three terms, there are multiple ways to represent each. For example, you could switch the order on the left. Watch the left side of each equation. Uh, wrong way. There we go. Because addition is commutative, the order is irrelevant on the left side. But you could also move terms around. For example, we can move any term from the left to the right. I could take these green terms, move them to the right side, and then we become negative just like that. Or we could have moved the other term. So let's put the red terms on the right and the green terms back on the left, like that. 
my point is there's a lot of ways to algebraically manipulate these three Pythagorean identities. So not only do you need to recognize, the, uh, know these three, you need to recognize algebraic equivalents to them. Now you try. Pause the video and try the following. Which of the following are valid variations of the three Pythagorean identities? Look carefully, pause the video, give it a try. And here's your fair warning if you haven't paused the video yet. Solutions in three, two, one. Only the last one was valid.